when he gets busted at the end, he's just mm. like, I wanted to get rid of all the immigrants and uh, gangs. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Hello, Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> it really was. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, John. Hi. <laughs> it's okay. Hi. <laughs> and we also have a gunsmith girl living in an ATF world, Chinoda. That's. Hi. <laughs> it's ter it's terrible, but I'll go with it. Sure, why not? Look, I was sitting at work and I was like, "What's the nickname for today gonna be?" And for some reason, uh, the like it started playing in my mind. I'm a uptown girl. That's the song. <laughs> okay, I was sitting here. I'm like, "What is the song?" I don't know the song. <laughs> like it just it was playing in my mind. Uh, like it just came up. I'm like, "All right, let me make this work." It's the I'm the like, lyrics. Uptown girl, girl living in a high class world. <laughs> okay, yeah. see, I was hearing like, "I'm a material girl," like a Barbie. The Barbie song. Oh, oh no, no, no. Because we good are song. living in a material. <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, that's why I was like, it doesn't make sense, though. It doesn't rhyme. I don't get it. No. Now <laughs> okay. everything connected. <laughs> All right. So before we actually get into our, our, our spoiler cast that we're going to be doing tonight, I do want to remind everyone who's watching and or listening, um, hit that like button below. Subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, it really does help us out. Uh, because tonight we are talking about the most American anime that's ever been made. <laughs> Most which is appropriate <laughs> which is which is appropriate considering when this is coming out yes uh we are uh, this is going to be releasing the week of of july 4th so uh happy independence day to all of our american uh followers um, Woo! oh i don't have my gun right there never mind oh damn <laughs> it's gonna fire off guns in the house hell yeah brother like, hell, a America. America. like a true american like a true american as the founding fathers intended us as the founding fathers intended God. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're going to be talking about the 1995 OVA series Gunsmith Cats. This is a very timely spoiler cast. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they will take all of our criticisms with with the utmost uh, reliance. <laughs> Listen, I'm sure everyone's been dying to hear about Gunsmith Cats. <laughs> to be fair, I, I do want to point out that the reason we're doing this is because it was suggested by a follower in our Discord server. And unironically, uh, I told a couple of my friends that uh, we were doing this. They were like, the hell is that? They checked out. They fucking love it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, we we do have a Discord server that's linked down below. Um, if you join it, we have a suggestion channel in there. So if you have a idea for a, a series or a movie we should review or do a spoiler cast on, please join and let us know because we might actually end up doing it. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. We actually do a lot of suggestions. <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, I guess getting into this, uh, as Guns with Cats was produced, as I said, back in 1995, produced by OLM, the Pokemon company. <laughs> they have been the ones that have been doing all the Pokemon anime all these years. In fact, they turned around right after this and started doing Pokemon. Good for them, honestly. <laughs> Which is, yeah, <laughs> kind of crazy to me. Um, we should actually do a, stu uh, like a studio retrospective on OLM at some point because they've had their hands in a lot of stuff. Most oh, recently, Apothecary Diaries. <laughs> Isn't OLM the one that um, Bug Films hates because they're like you're all fucking slave drivers? I, I, I could could be. I don't remember that, but I you may not yeah. be wrong. I don't remember who exactly it was. I'm pretty sure it's Studio OLM that's like the because uh, Bug Films was like, hey, because they uh, Zom 100 makes fun of um, their old <laughs> studio, which is like oh, it's apparently a um, what are they called? Black, black, black company. Black company, yeah. Black company, yeah. yeah that's Basically, yeah, they work like, their they work their employees of the bone. Yeah, they don't pay you overtime, and they expect twelve hour days, twelve sixteen hour days. You can't leave before your boss. Overtime is required. Yeah, <laughs> unpaid overtime is required. Yeah, yeah, um, that's uh, unfortunate. But OLM also did Berserk ninety seven. Just just throwing that out there. 
the only good you know anime one thing that I, I love so about older anime like 90s anime specifically is mm-hmm. I love that art style of 90s Me anime too. It's amazing. I don't, and I, I honestly don't know if that's like nostalgia because you know, obviously, you know, growing up in the '90s, I like '90s things. Whoa, who, who would have thunk? But I don't know. It Me- just, it's just different. There's something about I'll... '90s character designs that I've always loved. I will absolutely say because the art style is different, I absolutely adore it. It's not just the fact of um, the fact that it's nostalgia. No, it is. The art style is different. It looks beautiful, and it is... You can appreciate it because they had to do everything and its mother by hand. So, the love yeah, was Yeah, because you know, I'm thinking about, like, Trigun, um, Berserk Cabal 97, Bebop, Bebop um, Ghost in the Shell, except that was the 80s, like, late the, 80s, right? 80s. Well, the, the manga was in the late 80s, but the movie came out in 95. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, same year as this. Oh wow, man! Um, this stood no chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, completely different distribution. It was distributed on VHS tapes, man. All I'm saying is, like, you know how like things get released on the same date as other things or the same year, and it's like, bro, you shouldn't have released this year. You should have waited. Either you should have went a year earlier or a year after, because this year, like, Ghost in the Shell just dominated everything. So if you're not at the standard of like Ghost in the Shell, I don't think it's like you know. I mean. Evangelion also came out the same year. Oh, look at that. Two giants to compete with. Like for What uh, a like, busted year. <laughs> well, like, for example, the reason why Metroid took over as like Metroid and why we say Metroidvania, even though there was another game that released at the exact same time that had the exact same style of gameplay, which was Icarus. Mm. Did which Icarus is like, really release on the same year? It I think it released in like the same month as Metroid or something, and that's it got why overshadowed. It, it got hella overshadowed because Metroid was just too good. It's kind of like um, uh, we were talking about this on uh, the Discord server the other night that um, how certain things can overshadow things, even though they're both kind of equally as important. Because um, Natai mentioned to me that, um, and I didn't realize this, Frank Sinatra died on the exact same night that the final episode of The Sopranos aired. Or no, not not Sopranos. No, no, no. Um, uh, Seinfeld. Um, Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Yeah. And like, all all people remember is the final episode of Seinfeld. They don't remember that Frank Sinatra died the same night. Wasn't it, was it his a bigger impact? <laughs> his daughter or something? Someone, someone famous was like saying like they they wanted to go watch the finale but they couldn't because they had to go to his funeral or something yeah <laughs> who was that is i i, I his wife it his daughter or his, his wife, wife? I, I don't remember. remember i think it was his daughter we were talking no wasn't it it wasn't nancy reagan was it no god that would be crazy <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy i mean maybe it, i don't know stranger things have happened man <laughs> i listen i don't know i don't remember but uh yeah so i I think that the art and animation for Gunsmith Cats is beautiful. Uh, it, Some of it's it held looks, up very well. Yeah, like it looks really, really good. And uh, I was reading through the wiki, and it was talking about how the uh, production studio team came to America to come shoot guns and play with yes! explosives because you can't <laughs> yeah. do that. You can't do that in Japan. So they no. wanted to get a feel for like, all right, these are actually how guns work. This is how they feel. This is how they fire, and uh, I can say that they, they all look very impressive. Uh, there are a few discrepancies with some of the guns. Like, some of them are, like, supposed to be single stack, but they're double stack for some reason. And I'm like, you know, that's not how that works. That gun is actually a single stack. It's, it, like, what that means is in a magazine, you have one stack. So you have, like, ten bullets in one thing. Or you have a double stack, which is twice as wide. So there are certain guns that are skinnier than other ones so because they, they take single stacks. Like the um, the one that she's using, I believe it. I think it's a bread in ninety two. Um, I believe it is too. I have zero idea. I I I have to rewatch. I was gonna rewatch it before this episode, like before we started recording, so I could like write down like which guns they used at what point, so I could be like, hey, fun fact about this gun. Hey, fun <laughs> fact about this gun. But then I was like, you know what? I don't need the ATF to have any more reasons to flag me, so I decided <laughs> not to do that. <laughs> Uh, which is funny because the ATF plays an important role in this story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you know, and another, you know, one of the most unrealistic things about the sto- story to me is the fact that the ATF didn't shoot first and ask questions later and then sprinkle honestly. a little crack cocaine on the afterwards. Yeah. Like, that's, to me, that was the most surprising. <laughs> yeah, that's the most unrealistic thing about Gunsmith. He has to be perfectly <laughs> honest. <laughs> that the ATF didn't just break all the rules and then afterward go, oh, well, we didn't know. Yeah, yeah especially oh, shit. because of the fact that they weren't white males. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, mean, no, I'm, I'm not gonna leave it. <laughs> leave it. <laughs> uh, uh, so this, uh, the Gunsmith Cats OVA is directed by Takeshi Mori. Um, Takeshi Mori doesn't have a lot of directing credits, especially since doing Gunsmith Cats. But one thing um, he has done a lot of is uh, storyboarding, and I think it kind of shows in how Gunsmith Cats is directed. Like, it looks like it was intensely storyboarded before everything was done. Right. Yeah, it looks like it was well thought out. Um, All the panty shots, for sure, were well of, thought out. Absolutely. <laughs> all the times that you see uh, Rally in a bra and panty shooting guns, that was well thought out and designed, sir. And not just her. May as well. Like, yeah. Rally, you need to wear those heels. And it's just like, we just need a close-up ass shot of what May is wearing in her undergarments. And I'm just like... Please. Yeah. Very important. Very yeah. important. Uh one main theme about this movie is like they they really went full tilt with the whole like, hey, we need to sell this with sex, action and violence, guns, explosions, fast cars. And I'm like, yeah, this is like basically every man's dream all at once. So this is the, I, I was gonna say it. it's <laughs> it's a very American anime. It's the American <laughs> dream in an anime. It, it literally is though. The only thing it was missing was, like, a screaming eagle picking Rally up and taking her where she needs to go. And we were also fighting against the Russians, so I guess it's part of it as well, but... Yeah. <laughs> a very uh, American of a story, this Japanese uh, manga is. Yes. <laughs> um, also, I did want to uh, make a point to, to talk about the music for a little bit. So, the music in Gunsmith Cats is composed by Peter Erskine. So, for those of you who may not know, Peter Erskine is the former drummer of Weather Report, and he is a very well-known and very well-respected jazz drummer. I have um, he's, no idea who rather he has worked is. with so many big names in both like American and European jazz that it's it's crazy and he's still alive by the way. Oh, cool! Zen is like eighties, I believe. Hmm. Uh, oh, no, yeah. he's only seventy. Holy shit! Damn. Uh, but yeah, he's worked with a ton of um, people in both pop music and jazz. Uh, over the years i think the gunsmith cat soundtrack is actually really good i love the jazz and blues influence that a lot of the scenes have with their music i thought it was very american yeah <laughs> like this it felt really very like american jazz? <laughs> this felt like a very american 90s type of movie mm. yeah this, i mean no I, this is an ova series not a movie yeah but i was gonna speaking. ask you about that because style. like you've said but you've said that twice now and i have to say at the end of it, I felt like this could be edited into a movie. I mean... Like a 90-minute long movie. You definitely could, yeah. Like, I, other than the fact that it has an OP and an ED... Well, does it have an ED? It has, yeah, it I has mean, a credit it has scene. a it has credit an scroll with music. It has a credit scroll with music. That's not really an ED, but it does have an OP, so, I mean, technically speaking, it's episodic. It has an, OVAs, has an OP but... that reuses a lot of animation. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, <laughs> they 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 reuse the same animation I think twice in a loop in that OP. But I don't care. The music is really good. Honestly, uh, if you cut the OPs and EDs and just splice it together, I, you could watch it as a movie. I mean, when you this is so short, you could sit down for in a single sitting to uh, watch it all. And Easily. honestly, re- remove the OP CDs. It is basically movie length. Yeah, it's yeah. 120 minutes at most, if that. <laughs> yeah. Not even that. No, no not even. It's not even that, yeah, 90 it, minutes it, long. Yeah, it'd be like, um... It's like a hundred... Like it's like... 80, yeah, it'd be 80, like 80 minutes. 80, 85? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It would be a feature-length movie. Yeah. And I felt like it could have... It sh- I don't know why they released it as an OVA instead of a movie. Um, just because, like, it, it's structured for a movie. Like, it... Yeah. It has... The movie... Every it single would, it would episode really is an arc. I think it would really fit like a three act movie. I I I think it like I say I think it could be re-edited into an actual movie. I'm surprised yeah, no one's and, actually done like, that before. 
you said this entire like this is based on the uh the manga uh of the same name but this kind entire, of. this story kind of kind of it's kind it's of? it's it is the the characters are the same and the setting is the same the story is completely original so it is yeah, not that's a, what I was a straight gonna, up I was getting adaptation to. yeah no it's it has a manga but this is an original story for that manga so it's like they could have done and, a movie it's and not some of the stuff that happens in the ova does it's like it alludes to stuff that happens in the manga i also thought it was uh pretty funny that the main character's name they say it's rally but in one of the scenes we see like what her name is supposed to be and her name is supposed to be larry <laughs> 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 but Japanese people just can't pronounce the name Larry, so they just say Rally. Rally. It's like it's 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 actually Larry. Her name is Larry. <laughs> Speaking of, I, uh, let, let me say hi to her real quick. <laughs> what? What? You know who I'm talking about? No, we don't. That's why we said what? What? Your wife? Your name's not Larry. Nickname. What? That's not her nickname. What is he talking oh about, John? Make it make sense. You know what? Never mind. Go on. Your jokes we'll you are later. not landing today at all, it's sir. Not a, it's they not a joke. Excuse you. They were landing earlier. They were good. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'd say they're delayed is what they are. Um, <laughs> but um, where was I going to go with this before Joe to fucking derailed this with his reference that no one understood? Um, oh, I wanted to ask you guys: Did either of you uh, check out the English dub for this? No. I did. Uh, for the second episode, I was like, I wonder what the English sounds like. And then I watched it for about ten minutes. Was like, huh? Yeah, that's uh, that's a bad Russian accent. So then I went back <laughs> to the Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know um, who it is who does Radanov in English, but it is a very, very bad attempt at a Russian accent. That's, you know, one thing that I don't like about 90s anime is the dub scene. The dub scene for 90s anime is pretty atrocious. It, uh, there are there, there were, are instances, though, where it's pretty good, but they're few and far between in the 90s. Yeah, like Johnny, Johnny Young Bosch, Mary Elizabeth uh, McGlynn. Yeah. Um we had the old heads the uh back then. Trying That's to think of other people who I recognize as like top tier talents from the nineties. That are still around. <laughs> Some of them are. Wick. Um Oh, um, who is the guy that did um uh Shinji in Evangelion? Um Spike Spencer. Ooh. He's yeah. still around. Um but yeah, like the dub is Steve interesting. Bloom. Steve Bloom, yeah. Uh, the, the dub is interesting. I can't say it's bad, but I can definitely say it's of its time. <laughs> I, because, you know, again, traveling back into the Wayback Machine uh, 30 years ago. 30, 30 years ago. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Don't say that, check. please, I was like, is ever it, again. Is it actually? Like, yeah, it is. Anime just was not widespread. Like, the... Mm. I don't remember... I was reading something about, um like anime in the 80s and 90s was so rare like you might get lucky and have someone who might have a vhs that was spliced and it might they might have done subtitles for it mm -hmm. like they uh, they'll the hard like hard code the subtitles into it so you could understand it but overall fans, it was us fans had to literally build this yeah like the, <laughs> the suffering anime fans went through back in the 80s and 90s because they wanted to watch anime is a lot different like we don't we we literally get spoon-fed subtitles like an hour, 30 minutes after an anime airs in Japan. So <laughs> thanks. Uh, today's sponsor. And no, I'm kidding. We're not. Sponsored by <laughs> uh, do you know, do you know what sometimes I, I hate them, but do, do you know that sometimes when back in the day when they had those like splice subs that they would put on VHS or not subs, but like Japanese language ones that didn't have subtitles that they would just copy onto a vhs and take somewhere do you know what they would give people sometimes so they could actually understand what was going on an actual like transcript fucking written out transcript and subtitles <laughs> oh, they would have to follow along with on paper amazing <laughs> because they couldn't figure out how to put the subtitles in the vhs rip <laughs> so they just yeah. give you a transcript you'd have to flip through as the episode went on you did what you had to do <laughs> But yeah, uh, because anime was just so niche back then and so mm. just like not 
nearly as worldwide as it is today, there's no reason, there's no market, so there's no reason people would want to be in the line for, like, uh, dubbing and stuff. And even yeah. to this day, people don't get paid enough for doing their dubbing. So that's a, that's a whole different uh, problem. Which we have itself. talked about before, and it may be an issue worth uh, revisiting at some point on the podcast. Um, should we actually get into the story? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, the nonsensical story. The very, yeah, very nonsensical, very action-heavy, guns-and-girls story. <laughs> sure. Honestly, uh, this was a movie story. It, it kind of, yeah. So, like... It's set in and around the city of Chicago, which is cool. Um, I think they did a good job sort of representing the city in the 90s. Um, God, if they tried to redo that in today, there'd be a lot more shootings going on. So, uh, as I recall from the uh, Wikipedia article, uh, they actually went to Chicago, the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, a uh, lot of the sets that they and uh, scouting developed. And stuff, yeah. Yeah. A lot of the, like, settings and stuff like that, they actually pulled straight from like their pictures like oh yeah we, we remember the trains and all that and what this looked like so it's literally a real place and it's like that's really cool kind of yeah, like how in ghost in the shell uh the mangaka storyboard someone who designed um the like the towns and stuff it's based on like an actual town it's a it's a real no oh. shit place okay that's pretty i did not know shell. that yeah uh, they they just took it and made it like cyberpunk is noir punk Whatever cyberpunk. Ghost in the Shell no, was. It is cyberpunk. Uh, something else they did while they were here, they went to Hollywood and were able to get a hold of an actual uh, 1967 Shelby GT500. So the yeah. sounds oh you hear God. for that car are the actual sounds that car Holy makes. Holy shit. Dude, the, the Shelby looks fucking... Uh, the Cobra looks fucking beautiful, dude. Like, it's yeah. crazy. I don't it, know oh, why, man. but they gave love to the cars in this uh, show, and I love that. I really well, specifically did. just the Cobra, but it, yeah. I mean, it was cool. I'm like, guns, I girls, will... and fast cars. That's all I need. <laughs> I will say they give a little love to the car that Radinov drives in episode two, which I will get to when we get to episode two. Um, Cause I know what car she's driving, or I think I know what car she's driving. Um, all I know is it's a Mercedes. I didn't, I didn't double look at it. Cause I was like, I don't really care. Um, but no, um, the Foley work with the cars is really well done um, in this. I thought, um, what did you guys think of how they introduced Rally and in May? Like that the whole thing opening with Jonathan Washington. <laughs> Let me talk about the names. How they fucking suck. Are George so Black, basic? Jonathan Washington. <laughs> they're so basic. Bill Collins. <laughs> Bill Collins. <laughs> the only people with like interesting names are Rally and May. <laughs> They have actual names. Everyone else has fake names. <laughs> Quick, think of American names. Uh, yes, Jason Adams, <laughs> John Adamson, Smith. John Smith. <laughs> I hate uh. it. Yeah, I, I like that the way they're introduced, though. Like, it, it's quick, it's efficient, it shows you, hey, they're bounty hunters. They're pretty good at what they do. They get their man, and that's it. Like, short, simple introduction. It works. No need to drag it out. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean I, they have I, like I love... so it opens up with them at the gun shop, mm. and Rally and May are in the back, and then they get a customer, and it's a detective, and which that sets up something for later, by the way. <laughs> Does it? In episode three, yeah, because the guy that he the 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 customer that comes in, the guy he talks about recommended them is the guy they're talking to in episode three. Oh, that that's who he was. <laughs> I was wondering who the fuck that was. I was like, the detective he's something that went on vacation. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I don't know who the fuck this is. I was like, I'm missing something here. I don't know why he owes them a favor. I was like, okay, I guess they're just cool with each other, whatever. But, um, yeah, and I was just like, that's a cool gun shop. Um, surprised that there's there. no one working the front counter. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> it seems like a liability, doesn't it? It seems like Extremely. a little bit of a liability. And, like, God, dude, the fucking the action sequences are so fucking dumb. It's class. It's very reminiscent hey, of classic like '80s action, though. I will admit. Rule of cool. Rule of cool. Does it look? It's cool not even it cool. Works. It was just dumb as shit, bro. Like a lot of my problems with the the anime, the show, the Gunsmith Cats, uh, hmm. is that they choose, they pick and choose what like they're gonna base on reality and what they don't. And I understand that you know it's an anime, so anime bullshit needs to happen. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, That's just a requirement of anime. Anime bullshit must happen. Uh, But it's just weird how they will focus so much on, like, the details of certain aspects of, like, the real shit and then just throw it out the window in the next scene. And I'm just like, dude, I can't. When it becomes inconvenient. (laughs) Yeah, like, the freaking... So, you know, the ATF guy shows up and he's like, hey, I'm ATF. And they're like, get the fuck out of here. We're legal. And I'm just like, (laughs) that's right, boogeyman. I have all my stamps. Fuck off. My paperwork's (laughs) right here. (laughs) So it's just like yeah, that him trying to. I love the way them. I love the way they treat Bill from like the moment he steps in and introduces himself as an Absolute ATF agent. Hatred. It's like oh oh look, it's the it's a guy from the Department of Everything That's Fun, or no, yeah. the the Department of of banning everything that's fun. The subtitles were uh, really good inside of, and they actually talked about. Uh, I'm not sure who did the subtitles for the OVAs. But they are accurate towards like the rules that they talk about for like uh, the illegal possession of like uh, firearms and all that stuff. And I was like, hey, that's actually accurate. What the fuck? <laughs> I do think I do think as part of that whole like scouting trip when they came to Chicago, I do believe that the writing team also talked to people from the ATF. Boo. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> but hey, I mean, they got to get the lingo right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but also like you know, fuck the feds. Uh... <laughs> I'm How not, do you do, I, Fed boy? I, 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 I have no association with this man. <laughs> uh, anyway. It's okay. We keep an eye on him. I mean, to be fair, the whole <laughs> thing with it. the whole thing with, with Bill setting them up to work with them uh, and the, like, the sting operation probably wouldn't happen in real life either. Uh, mm. Again... I thought it was pretty realistic of the ATF agent setting them up. Like, obviously, they're the ones who told the stupid people, like, hey, that's a house full of guns. You guys should go rob it. Of course, yeah. When the guys come in, they're the the patsies. Yeah, it's like he set them up so that way he could legally bust them because he knew they had illegal, um, you know, they they needed a class three, which is a, uh, if you don't know, in America, if you want to own uh, certain classes of weapons, um, or firearms, not weapons, firearms, because they're tools. You need a class three license. So, and then you have stamps and stuff that you pay extra for, like a couple hundred dollars. Uh, and they talk about that. And then, like, uh, obviously, May has explosives, and it's like you know, that's not <laughs> that's not legal at all. <laughs> Even if you make them yourself, they're not legal. Especially uh, if you make them by yourself. <laughs> Where did you get that uranium rod? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry uh, about it. Is is John frozen for you as well? Uh, I don't know. Did John did John die? Is John de- dead? I think John's dead. Oh God, he's dead. That's an interesting look he's got on his face though right now. It's a very interesting look. All right, I get, let's just keep going until um, I'll message him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but no, the first episode uh, opened up pretty good and it introduced uh, everyone to. Um, the characters, the setup, uh, I thought it was pretty nice. Um, yeah, I, I thought the setup in the, like, the way everything is set up in the in the first episode, it does a good job of introducing the setting and, and the characters, and <clears throat> also, oh, John is, it must have, John must have died. Um, it did a really good job at, like, setting up how corrupt some of the people in law enforcement are. Shocking, I know. <laughs> Um, what a surprise. <laughs> oh, what a shock. <laughs> what an absolute shock. Who would have guessed? I also, I know that John probably will say that it, it's stupid the way it plays out, but um, I actually really like the warehouse shootout at the end of I episode one. It. So I don't know if you've seen it, but on like social media, a whole bunch of places, um, someone did like a fallout uh, crossover with it when uh, I've seen it yeah yeah with May, May with May run- reaching for the thing and it's like it goes into vats and she's like targeting all the people <laughs> specifically that one guy just lets everything go and it's like warehouse crippled <laughs> I've, yeah I've seen I that it's really funny it. uh, so that was actually probably my first time seeing Gunsmith Cats I saw that I'm like the fuck is this this looks great yeah um, I'm, I'm uncertain as to whether but, we should move on without John. <laughs> no, no, we'll keep going. Um, okay. 
No, uh, so the warehouse uh, fight was uh, cool. It, it was uh, it was still the introductory part, the end of it. Um, after that, we get to episode two, which uh, you get introduced to the Russian lady. Who? Let me tell you. Woo, woo! John's back. I like, I'm back. I, I like me a big Russian. <laughs> Hi, John. The ATF uh, destroyed my internet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they they got a tip from me. <laughs> oh the shit, Fed boys got upset that I was making fun of them too much. Oh, they got butt hurt. <laughs> That's right. I don't own a dog. I own a cat, so they won't shoot it. Oh, oh, buddy. As my uh, internet buddy. goes down again, watch. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> and your daughter gets sniped. <laughs> How are you gonna splice all this together, John? I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Mm. Anyway, anyway, we were we talked we talked about the the warehouse shootout at the end of episode one. Now we're on to episode two. <laughs> oh man, I wanted to talk about how bullshit that first fight. I gun knew fight he'd say was. that. <laughs> I told you he'd say that. All right, I loved right, it. We'll go back. I, I absolutely loved it. I I mean you know again cheesy action movie. So I know that. For for whatever reason, like when the house gets raided, right? And they have literally an M two four nine um machine gun, and they just somehow lose to a fucking handgun. It's just like there is one doorway, bro. Like <laughs> I don't. It doesn't matter that, if you turn yeah. the lights off. I point my gun in that doorway and I press and hold the fucking pin, <laughs> like the trigger. <laughs> Eventually, something's gonna happen. <laughs> But like I, I I digress. Um, and then the the whole explosive use is like in the house. Like yeah, uh, in this world, explosions only damage walls and stuff. Uh, when it's convenient for the plot. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, your wooden staircase is completely safe. Um, and then the okay. warehouse shoot scene, like it was so dumb because she she has a handgun again. Warehouse full of fully automatic rifles. Just none of them can hit her because, you know, she's too cool to get hit. Bro, the cool guy meter is too cool. high. Rule of cool. Rule of cool. Rule of cool, man. And it's just like... And naturally she gets hit by something and her shirt gets ripped and you see her titties. I mean, Oh, naturally. yeah, naturally. Naturally, naturally. that... <laughs> naturally some dude goes, oh, man, we can't gun this chick down, so let me go and get the... The hook, the hook, and hit her the, with a uh, crane, and hit her with the the crane hook, and I'm like, <laughs> now does that what? does that does that knock her out? No, it just rips her shirt so you can see titties. Yeah, it's just it's classic, bro. It's classic, and <laughs> you know the 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 fact that all these guys with fully automatic uh weapons can't hit her, can't do anything to her, and then eventually uh she she has to use a shotgun and she actually does use a, a very interesting trick where she actually she shoots the ground is like all right i'm gonna uh she says it in the movie she says i'm not one to rely on luck but and then she shoots the floor and then it actually scatters and hits the dudes in the shit and i'm like that is an actual real thing that'll happen to projectiles if you shoot them on a hard surface so that's actually pretty smart of her to do that because you will hit them in the feet and it's gonna fucking hurt uh, it won't kill them. It's not gonna be lethal, but it'll. But it will hurt, hurt them. them. And they'll go. And it can yeah, incapacitate them. They will stop firing at you for a little, a couple seconds. Yes. Yeah. But overall, I was just like, yeah, cheesy action scene. Um, again, the logic doesn't logic when unless it wants to, and it's just it's dumb. I hated it. Cause I, I, I just just like, I'm missing the uh the cheesy '80s like. Doo -doo 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 you know the the baseline that they always do for action, like tense yeah. action scenes. Yeah, the ridiculousness. Yeah, <laughs> for like it, like oh, like they did in the uh, the original Terminator movie, like the the heavy synth. Yeah, and it's just like. Ugh. But anyway, yeah, and then the episode two, we meet the Terminator. Uh, the actual cool. Terminator, <laughs> the actual fucking Terminator. We actually meet her. I love uh, the big Russian man. Which they actually I... they call her that in episode three. They call her a Terminator. <laughs> Yeah, no, I thought it was at the end of episode, episode two. Or maybe it like, is at the like end the, of episode two, two yeah. They're like, two, she's like the fucking two. Terminator, man. And then that's when they come out to the car and they see the knife and it's like, it's a direct challenge to me. Yeah. By the way, did you guys happen to notice the uh, the Star Trek Easter egg at the very beginning of that episode? No. No. So if you go, if you, if, you know, the, the episode opens with the guys at like the docks or whatever it is, and it does some like establishing shots and panning shots. And it does like a quick like jump and pan to the like a um, license plate on the front of a car. That license plate reads 
NCC 1701. Oh. I never would have gotten that. Not a yeah. Trekkie. Would not have gotten that at all. That's actually really cool. The very first time I ever saw Gunsmith Cats and I saw it, I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> Insert pointing meme here. Yep. But yeah, I, I yeah, kind of like um, I, I like Radinov's introduction though, like as the badass like ex KGB officer. I thought it was cool, but then and and then the weaponry that she uses, like she just likes using a fucking uh ballistics knife, you know, the Spetsnaz mm-hmm. ballistic knife. That thing is spring loaded. That's not gonna kill people, dude. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna stab through someone if they don't have any armor on, sure. Uh, but like she kills the sheriff yep. security guard when she shows up in canada yeah with it i don't like, know exactly what sheriff. he's supposed it was to be the sheriff but... yeah someone yeah, in I charge think someone in charge at the dock that she comes out of mm-hmm. yeah she shoots him like not even in the heart she shoots him on the um on his right side and up here in the chest and i'm like that's not even where your lungs would be like you would be, you would hit a little you might have hit a little bit of the lungs but you wouldn't instantly die from that and first, you might kill over that... in pain. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna hurt. You're like, oh fuck, I got stabbed. God, God damn. But it's just like, nope. She shoots him. He's like, ah. he's dead now. Like within, like, yeah, within this... like three seconds, he's just dead. Like, was that poison <laughs> tipped? What? It's, All I know is it's, it's Call of Duty magic, bro. Yeah. It's, it's it's Call of Duty magic. All right, she's <laughs> spring loaded shit. knife. <laughs> now, as unrealistic as it is, it does establish her as the badass. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah, no, and she and she's also super cruel because after she kills the dude with the ballistic knife, then she steps in it. <laughs> yes, and I'm just like, okay, yeah, that you know, it'd be one thing if he was still alive. No, she just steps in it because she's an asshole. Yeah, um, I also love when the the guys are like goading her after she kills the dude. It's like, how much to sleep with you, dude? <laughs> it's like. And she just ignores them. <laughs> she turns around when they're talking about the next job. And he's like, duh. <laughs> I thought she was gonna murder the dude who kept lipping off just to show like she's not she's no one to fuck with. I thought so too. Uh, but I really thought yeah, he was a goner. Yeah, I was just I thought it was weird to include that scene but not get him murdered. And I was like, why did he have this dialogue then? Like I I didn't really understand that. Uh but I did like how she uh Natasha Natasha? Yeah, Natasha. Yeah, Nat- uh Natasha yeah. Radinov. Uh I liked how she used different guns. She had, like, a bunch of different weaponry inside of her bulletproof jacket. <laughs> Apparently that's a thing, a bulletproof she, fucking She went to the uh, school of John Wick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can make bulletproof uh, fibers, and it will stop a bullet from going through your skin, but it's not going to stop the bullet from cracking your goddamn ribs and breaking And it's your not going to stop you from being in pain from being shot. Yeah. Oh, it, it, you get, just like if you have a, a, a vest on. Unless it's a AR-500 steel or something. If you get, like, a Kevlar vest, you get hit in the chest, it's going to knock the wind out of you. telling you, just wear phone books, man. Just wear phone books. <laughs> <laughs> just strap a they bunch of phone, phone books to your body. <laughs> Do it, like, three layers deep. <laughs> It'll be bulletproof to a certain extent, yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, she uses a bunch of different weaponry, which I thought was really cool. Like, there was a... There's that... Uh, I think it's a german gun it's a it's like an internally suppressed like 22 uh pistol which is like a little action tube where mm-hmm. you, you shoot it and you pull it out like this and to like take out the round mm-hmm. it was super cool and i was just like oh look at that this is, it's a cute little gun i like how she uses weapons of opportunity sometimes too like she's yeah, not i mean you, i get it xkgb badass number one assassin yeah the fucking no. terminator use what's available to you yeah now i know that like the idea of corrupt politicians and corrupt law enforcement is like it's something that happens we we get introduced to it in episode one but then we get in episode two like washington at the the safe house the atf safe house is like hey i gotta tell you something and he turns off the or he like disables the uh the microphone they had in the room and it's like i gotta tell you about a conspiracy it's like <laughs> they just fuck off <laughs> like they just fuck off yeah, and, and again, in that scene where uh, Natasha shows up and it's like, it's an ATF safe house. Mm. They know that this is a safe house. Someone randomly just shows up and they don't just immediately start blasting. <laughs> yeah, like, you, just think, like you think they'd have like some kind of a password system at the door? 
You'd something? think that because they were the ATF that they'd just start killing people. And again, the <laughs> ATF is very well known and documented to shoot first and ask questions later. Right, John, no, no, John, no. Calm down. Shoot first, ask questions, never. Yeah, never ask questions. It's the, <laughs> they're the goddamn ATF. The fucking federal boogeyman. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, yeah, the, the to... Washington does give Rally and May like the, the watch and the address, which does lead them to something that was actually seen in episode one. So the the website that he was looking at with <laughs> just a woman with her titties out is a, it's like apparently a, it was a porn website. Uh, it was yeah. it was disguised as a porn website. It's actually some kind of a fucking back door into an ATF database. Which is insane. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't understand any of that. Like and This why... is also in the early days of the internet, too. This is 1995. Well, like, for one thing, uh, why did Washington have that? Like, yeah. that, uh, the sales, like, <laughs> one thing that they did get accurate was that the ATF was selling uh, guns to in, on the black market. I'm like, hey, the ATF has lost millions of uh, confiscations. Conspic- Confic oh my god, I can't say the word. <laughs> Confiscated. Cons- yes. <laughs> that word. <laughs> good job, John. <laughs> Listen, it was a good English, effort. <laughs> English no not Jozu, okay? <laughs> Ego not Jozu. Um But yeah, it's like that that's a real thing. The ATF has millions of guns they, they confiscate and they can't the account- CIA like, not, too. not millions. They have uh hundreds of guns that are confiscated and cannot be found so it's like they're just lost and sometimes they sometimes they find their way onto just random crime scenes where people just it was inconvenient for them to still be alive (laughs) so um so yeah that part like the conspiracy thing i was like yeah that's realistic (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's something i could totally see happening Yeah. What political um, corruption at the top of the uh, bureaucracy? Yeah, I could see that. That's definitely something I see all the time. Actually, I mean, so. hell, even in this in this episode, Bill gets removed from the gun running case that he's on because he's starting to ask questions. Yeah, and then, like again, that's a very American um, like thought line, actually. Yeah, it is like how how much corruption is in law enforcement and in particular government agencies like the ATF. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, originally it's like we we learned that there's an ATF mole. There's someone on the ATF selling guns. We know that at this point. It's like, okay, and they have a Russian hitman. Uh, hit woman? Hit man? Sure. Hit, hit person? <laughs> sure. Russian hit man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, going out and taking out – taking care of all the loose ends. Mm. And um, – then we get to the uh, the end of the episode, or we get to the fucking car chase scene, right? Oh, uh, it's so this good. car chase scene was actually it's so awesome. Good. The one thing that I always hear about Gunsmith Cats is the fucking car chase scene. Every it's time, all hand drawn. It's it looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, the soundtrack was all right. It, it, again, dated, but it was all the right. The foley for the car is really good. <laughs> the foley, amazing. Uh, the logic behind the chase scene didn't make sense to me because I'm like, all right, as a, no, no, as a no, ex- it made it made perfect sense because it was an action movie car scene chase. That's, that's true. That's why it makes sense. Well, I mean, I just had questions, right? <laughs> like, like I do in every type of like, okay, so this ex KGB uh, pro assassin kidnaps May because reasons. Like, just we'll just kidnap May. Never really explained why she kidnapped May, uh, other than, like, well, she's supposed to take out May and rally. Yeah, she's supposed to kill them. So so why didn't she just kill May when she had the chance? Like, she's in your car. She's not armed. You could have snapped. You literally like to stab people, so just stab her. Like, she's right there. I mean, the only thing I could say is, like, she's trying to lead both of them out of the city in some way to kill them both at the same time to make it more so you say but during the high speed chase she literally pulls out like machine guns and And starts firing into traffic (laughs) randomly yeah so i'm just like i don't i don't really understand the logic of all this like i Uh, think maybe she was trying to kill them together at the same time just to do it uh easily but then i was like that doesn't make sense either like it didn't it did not make sense um 
Because it would have been easier point, to try and kill them both at the yacht club where she was first kidnapped. She could have just killed May there. Like, what was yeah. the whole chase scene about? I mean, hell, if you just wanted to, to, to kill May by herself, put her in her car, tie her up, and shoot her in the head. Didn't even have to. Like I said, May was unarmed. Well, no. As we find out, May is always armed. Yeah, <laughs> always May is never unarmed. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I just didn't understand that part. Like why, why did Natasha do that? Uh, and then like the whole, I could logic, like maybe she had to kidnap May because if she didn't kidnap May, she wouldn't be like, if, if she killed May, um, Rally wouldn't go and try to pursue her. Maybe that's the logic behind it. That's why maybe. she, like she perceived, um, Rally as the bigger threat. Cause she does talk about that. Like, I can't believe there's an, uh, an American who's this good at shooting or something. She says yeah. that like this, early uh, on. an American, this skilled, this skilled, is what yeah. she says. So that's the only way I could see it. Like why she would keep May alive. Cause like, okay, if I don't have May alive, then I rally wouldn't fight me. So I, I guess so she views rally as like a rival perhaps. Well, obviously she views her as a yeah, rival, but yeah. especially after she gets hit by uh, by Rally. She's like, oh my god, she actually shot my earlobe and took <laughs> off my earring. Oh my god. And I'm like... She got pissed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm just like, what? Like, I get that you're a psycho bitch, but like, that's what that, that's what got you? Like, I can't believe she shot me. <laughs> it's like... I do want to say one thing about this chase. <laughs> so, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that Radinov is supposed to be driving a Mercedes S600 because that's the closest thing I can find to what it looks like that she's supposed to be driving. If that's the case, that was offered in two different engine varieties, a 5-liter V8 or a 6-liter V12. If that bitch has the V12 in it, there's no way that Rally could have kept up with her in that fucking Cobra. There's no way. <laughs> it couldn't have been then. Yeah. So... <laughs> Again, they pay attention to a lot of things and uh, use realism. And then there are parts where it's like, yeah, my my '97 Corolla uh, Camry can catch or Corolla, my Toyota Corolla '97 Corolla can catch up to a fucking S2000. Like, yeah, for sure, yeah. bro. <laughs> Keep thinking that. <laughs> what move? Definitely. <laughs> this this Ford F150 caught up to this Bugatti Veyron. Sure, sure, sure. dude. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Going no, around corners? Back. Maybe. In a straight line? No. <laughs> In a drag race? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, and then the, uh, and then she gets hit, and fucking, I didn't, <laughs> what was, what was May's plan? Like, if, her entire plan of, like, explode the car and get out, right? Because apparently she's like, oh, yeah, play the tape, and then we'll use the tape. Because Rally honks her horn to, like, tell May, like, get the message. And yeah. I think it's supposed to be Morse code. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe they had the prearranged signal. I think it's it like, was hey, a prearranged signal. We're going to yeah. do Tactic B or whatever, where I play this tape, and at the end of this song, that's when you do the thing. And I'm like, I don't... Okay, so she's looking for an opportunity to escape, and she finds it. Because um, Rally shoots out the back window and now May can escape. And then May leaves, like, bombs everywhere. And then she falls into the car. But my question was, okay, was it always a plan for Rally to break her front windshield? Because if that front windshield wasn't broke and Becky was not there, May would have fucking died. <laughs> She would have got yeeted out of that car at 80 miles an hour. The better question is, that is not a clean break for that windshield. If she touches the edge of that windshield, she should have so many cuts. And again, I can kind of maybe logic like, oh, maybe she was always going to break the windshield. Like, because uh, Rally has those glasses on. She throws them on, you know, and she's like, how oh, I'm ready for this. I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, again, they apply logic when they want to and it's like yeah if you don't have a front windshield you're gonna get a bunch of air in the face and bugs perhaps so, and a bunch of, you know, i mean and no, debris no, and you know all the other debris yeah but again it's just like maybe that's why they, i know i don't know it was it was a weird chase scene but it looks good I, it looks you know, amazing classic, classic i think the less scene. you think about it and just enjoy it for what it is the better I'm gonna you stop you right there, Chinoda. That could be applied to all three episodes of this fucking OVA. That's what I was gonna say in the end, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the whole fucking the flash the, was it uh, when they used the flashbang against the um, was the guys in the warehouse they used the flashbang on? 
Um, no. When did they yes. use the? Yes. No, it was in the um. At it the was yacht in episode club. two at the yacht club. Yeah, the yacht club. Yeah, yeah. Like, again, they have glasses on and they throw a flashbang and then like it stuns everyone except the girls because the girls knew they they were gonna use a flashbang mm-hmm. and they have glasses on. I'm like, you know, it also concusses you because it's right there. It, it's a loud explosion. Your ears are at the very least going to be ringing very loudly. Yeah, if not just fucking bleeding because you're right next to the goddamn blast. Like, it doesn't just... Like, a flashbang doesn't just blind you. It also concusses you. It goes bang. Yeah, loud, very loudly. That's so, a flash concussion, yeah. That's the flash bang. <laughs> I, again... They use logic when it is convenient for them, and then they just throw it, and they do things so accurately, again, like with the guns and stuff. And then it's like, I, I'm pretty sure they probably use the flashbang in real life, so they know what it's like. But maybe because the uh, the studio, they didn't actually get flashbanged themselves, they just observed it from afar, so they didn't get the concussive blast. They're like, oh, yeah, we're fine. It's like, yeah, of course you're fine if you're not right next to the goddamn bang. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there's so many action movies where people are shooting off guns in close proximity and they can hear just fine. Oh, yeah, like the whole fucking, the first episode with the, they're in the basement with all the guns and he pulls out the, the, the M249, just like, like, yeah, dude, you definitely Everyone in that room deaf. would be deaf. <laughs> yeah. Permanent. Oh. Uh. Or like even in uh, it happens in John Wick too that that scene where they they got the the silencers on their gun and they're trying to shoot each other in a crowded place. Yeah, they're, they're playing pew pew pew. pew and it's, and like, it's like it would like, not like, be like, like that. People would still hear that shit going on. Yeah, uh, movie logic is so fun. <sighs> movie logic, dude. So that's... to be and to be fair, in this in this specific instance, the the bad guys in that scene do react the way people that get flashbang do. They fall over. They're they're covering their eyes, and a couple of them are covering their ears. Yeah, but again, the girls, it doesn't happen to them, and I'm like, they're right there too, dude. Built and do you different. know what grade sunglasses you would need to not get blinded by a flashbang? I don't think you understand that it burns at like a thousand Celsius, bro. Like Even the magnesium if they were. ignites and it, it burns so the reason why it's so bright is because it's like a thousand degrees Celsius. Isn't it a magnesium ah! flash that they use? It's a I don't remember what they use inside of it. Some something strikes and it's magnesium based. Um, now, even even if you take at face value that they're wearing some kind of glasses that give that kind of protection, which is a big ask, they should still be it like does. at least not be able to talk to each other. You would think. <laughs> but no, yeah. they just go just on. Be like, what? <laughs> Speak out, what? <laughs> but that doesn't make for a good action scene. That's, yeah, yeah, I get it. It's supposed to be like balls to the wall action fun. Um, anyway, so they get they to the end of the They blow up the car scene. at the end of episode two, and it makes you think that Radinov is dead because she plunges into the fucking Chicago River. Nah, bro, she's built different. <laughs> She just built the Apparently. <laughs> like, she can withstand. She's the Terminator. That's why. Yeah. Um, and then you get to episode three, which is the final episode of this OVA series. And all of it comes to a head. Uh, you've got the senator that's kind of been in the background all these episodes. Um, senator Hines. Hines. <laughs> Fucking named after ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, who's running for mayor of Chicago for some reason. That seems like a downgrade, but whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, right? He's a senator. What? I mean, there's Maybe like, there's like, there's like three or four cities in the United States for people who live outside the United States, where if you're the mayor of it, it may be more prestigious than being like a state senator. I don't think Chicago is one of those cities. It's not. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say a mayor. I mean, a mayor Yes and no, right? Like they're kings of the, of their pond. You got to yeah. think about how big their pond is. Like, in, like the, the in terms mayor of, of like, New York yeah. has a lot of power. The mayor of New York City has a ton of power. Yeah, because New York is like yeah, the mayor of any giant metropolitan area has a lot more power than like a senator for like Indiana. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> no one lives in Indiana. No, no one important. <laughs> Uh, so uh so it's like maybe but i i don't know that, that was a weird thing and then like the whole like finding out that the senator has been behind it this entire time which i yeah. i didn't see that coming because from the first episode 
I was like, oh, it's definitely the head of the ATF. Like, see, I thought I thought they were gonna set up like George Black is like the big bad guy. Yeah, I thought George Black was gonna be the. Yeah, really? The I called it to be the senator the whole time. Like as soon as I saw him, I'm I like, thought he's gonna what be I the thought, bad guy. What I thought when I first watched this is that George Black, the head of the ATF in Chicago, is gonna be the puppet master, and he was gonna set up the senator to be the fall guy. Yeah, I definitely did not think it would be the other way around. Yeah, which is a good. I, I thought it was a good a good way to like wrap that up, honestly, because it. it I know for some people probably see it coming a mile away. For me, it was the first time I watched it. It, it definitely subverted my expectations because from from the get go, you can just see that the head of the ATF is scummy as fuck. Oh yeah, yeah. I I mean, given how like he talks the bill and then like the uh, senators on the line, he's like, "Oh, Mister Senator," and starts kissing his ass. I'm like, and oh, he's yeah. also the first person that wants to kick Bill off the case when he starts to ask too many questions. Which is why I thought maybe the head of the ATF was doing that because like I'm tired of being underdog. Yeah, and because he's the head of the ATF, he has control over all the guns that go in and out there, so he can sell them easily and make more money. I thought it was going to be a whole like black market running deal. I didn't think it was going to be a whole um. Whatever weird senator he wanted the illegal guns from the ATF to do something. I'm not entirely sure what his entire plot point was. Well, it's funny because his his like platform for running is like getting guns off the street. Yeah, so, so that way there would be thing. more guns for him to sell. I, I understood yeah, that. To get Make, to get rich. <laughs> yeah, get rich off of making guns more scarce. So that way, the illegal market, it goes up. And it's like, yeah, that makes sense. That's completely... uh, Understandable. Understandable. But what I didn't understand was, like, when he gets busted at the end, he's just Mm. like, I wanted to get rid of all the immigrants and uh, gangs. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Hello, Donald Trump? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, it, Man, it's, it's so like you're backwards. not sorry you you're not sorry about it. Is you're just sorry you got caught. <laughs> no, I I didn't understand how would getting rid of guns and then selling it on the uh, black market get rid of the illegals and the gangs. I, I tell you exactly how you could do it. Make sure you get all those illegal guns into the hands of immigrants, because uh, then you have a reason to deport them. That happens all the time anyway. What? Exactly. He's just trying to accelerate the process. <laughs> That's not going to change Jack. Oh, my God, dude. I'm not saying it's a good plan. I'm just saying I it's mean, probably his it's plan. A plan. Yeah. That is a plan. I just didn't understand how doing that. Again, if it stuck with the whole, like, oh, I'm doing it because I just want to get rich. I'm like, okay, understandable. That makes sense. You know, corrupt politician mm-hmm. wants more money and power. <clears throat> makes sense. Uh, but his end goal was, no, I wanted to better America. I was going to make America great again by banning the illegals and the make, gangs. Make Chicago great again. <laughs> and I just didn't understand how how his entire plot would have done that. <laughs> like, by making guns harder to get in Chicago would have helped stop gangs. I'm like, who do you think's buying your illegal guns? <laughs> like, I don't understand. It's, it's, not, it's not the fine upstanding citizens. <laughs> But I digress. Anyway, uh, so we have the the final, the uh, the climax of the uh, series, which is the the battle at the museum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, very movie uh, movie magic like convenience here. Like, what a convenient battleground! A museum that has been shut down for um for renovation. Renovation. Re- renovation. Yeah. <laughs> so now there's no innocent people. We don't have to worry about any of that. And now they can fight to their heart's content. And I'm like. <laughs> What the fuck? I did enjoy the um, shenanigans that happened over there, though. I will say, I like the shootout. I mean, it's it's action packed. It's it's like a cat and mouse game. I like it. I didn't understand like the girls, like May and uh, Rally's mm. entire plan. The plan like, is there is they no plan. know that. <laughs> Well, their plan was like, oh, we're going to go onto the roof and we'll we'll fight her there. We'll lead her into these traps and this and that. Mm-hmm. Like, and then it just goes to shit because as it turns out, Natasha, the Terminator, is a fucking Terminator and will tank like, through all that bullshit. Like, she, she's, got that, that... she's got that nod, win energy. <laughs> yeah. She literally just goes nod, win, and then she does win, actually. <laughs> kicks the shit out of May. 
uh kicks the shit out of uh literally stabs um rally uh and she then, also like makes her fall down like a scaffolding at some point may that yeah she kicks she like throws may off the thing and then may falls down and then she just has a flashbang that goes off and it, it can save her and then it's like they then they ends up them being in the museum and mm. it's the most anticlimactic fight because that's where the fight stops they don't yeah. fight anymore and i'm just like what was the point like i again why would you fill it with so much action from episode one to episode two and now subsequently episode three and then like at the climax of where they should be fighting to the death it's like oh nope the girls got their shit kicked in uh, we're gonna just run these traps and then like they do the surprise boogeyman jump scare at the end where it's like oh shit Natasha's still alive and then Rally can finally kill her and I'm just you like I don't you know what's funny I thought about that scene when I was rewatching it and I'm like if they had to do this in modern day that scene would be in slow motion I know for a fucking fact it would be damn I you Zack Snyder <laughs> I think it would have been cut out I think it straight up really been cut out yeah you, do you think they would have killed her like on the rooftop or something? Yeah, I think no. It would have been uh, a it would because it's supposed to be a cat and mouse game, and it's like they play it up quite a lot with like the whole. It was super cool. Like uh, she walks in, like um, Natasha walks into the uh the window, and it's like I see a tripwire. Looks at it, it's like ha ha. You think you're smart? And it's about to cut it, and she goes looks at the other side, and it's like oh, it was a double trap. You cut it, it actually goes off. And I'm like <laughs> oh shit, that's actually super cool. Yeah. So that was that very interesting, very cool. I really liked that. So with that type of cat and mouse lead up, I was expecting in typical action movie um sequence that there would be a big like climactic fight, but there really wasn't. It was just mm. a cat and mouse game, and then as it turns out, uh she gets outplayed by May and she opens up the door stall and that's where we think May and Rally are, but it's like psych, it's a fucking bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Blows up. And then they expose the senator, and it, you know, he does his stupid. Oh, I wanted to get rid of the immigrants and the gangs by banning guns. It was all the Puerto Zelda Ricans' fans. fault. <laughs> okay, Ted Cruz, calm down. It was a weak <laughs> ending. It was a weak ending to uh, otherwise. Yeah, and okay. I'm just like, it, it was very disappointing to mm -hmm. say the least, because it's like, and then you know, the boogeyman jump scare, and then Rally just fucking shoots her and i'm just like oh and this is the second time bill has saved her life by the way yes uh yeah it's like the first time was when she was about to get stabbed by the knife bill shoots um natasha so her aim is off and then now bill comes back at the end to like um actually no this is more than the uh second time because he also screams at rally when they're at so she doesn't get shot when they're getting the award from the senator yeah and that's how oh, rally doesn't right. get shot you know, so, it's funny because there's there's a lot of people, again, if this came out today, that might look at Rally and say she's a Mary Sue. She fails too often to be a Mary Sue. I wouldn't say she's a Mary Sue uh, because she got her ass whooped. <laughs> In a one-on-one -on -one fight against Natasha, she lost every yeah. single time. In fact, the only reason she won is because Natasha had to get blown the fuck up twice, all right? Mm. <laughs> once in the car, once in the building, and then... She gets shot at by Bill, so then finally Riley can kill her. And it's just like, yeah, I wouldn't say she's a Mary Sue at all. Mm. Uh, she might be a Mary Sue in comparison to, like, the jobbers, like the um, the, the henchmen that were trying to rob him in the first the episode, sure. But, yeah, like, against the, the big bad of the entire story, like, no, she was nothing. Literally yeah. nothing. She got rolled. Yeah. Like, if did. you 1v'd 1 me on Russ, you would lose. <laughs> bad. You know... <laughs> I kind of agree with you guys, though, that the the ending is kind of a wet fart. <laughs> it's weak. I mean, it's weak. I, I feel like this is, this, this is kind of my overall feelings of, of Gunsmith Cats, right? Like, I enjoy this kind of, like, it's not a deep story. It's not something you have to really think about. It's just a fun, action-oriented uh, detective romp, basically. Um I really wish there was more of this in anime format. Like, I feel like this could be a good, like, starting point for a longer-running series, like a two- or three-season-long series, with them going on all these, like, adventures, trying to solve all this shit. And I being... mean, 
it would have been it's... good, but like I don't know how much staying power it really had. I think it was good because of the fact that it was so short. Yeah, but I also I think, think that kind of hampered its ending because you didn't get a, I, as I, I much of a chance. I think this type of to... like story, this type of the archetypes that we uh, see from Gunsmith Cats, like with the characters, right? Mm -hmm. With between uh, Rally, May, and Becky, uh, literally just Charlie's Angels. Um, <laughs> Without Charlie. Without Charlie, yeah, Charlie doesn't exist. I guess Bill could be Charlie, right? I Bill's guess Charlie. Bill is the closest thing to Charlie, yeah. Uh, I just feel like this type of format is very outdated. Um, mm. and there's plenty of freaking shows that launch to this day where it has like, here are two heroines and we go explore through their story and adventure or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I mean, I don't think it'd, it'd be bad. I just don't think it would be great. Mm. Uh, what makes Gunsmith Cats great is that for the time it was animated very well. Uh, yeah. the story is nonsensical and it, it reminds me of an old action movie. Other than the fucking ending, because again, you know, episode one we have the the warehouse fight. Episode two we have the car chase. Like mm -hmm. it, they, and not just the car chase. We had the uh the yacht club, and then we had the chart the car chase. So it's yeah. like two action scenes action back after, to back, yeah, back to back action for episode one. Right, we had the basement scene, then we had the um the warehouse scene, and then then we get to episode three, and it's just like okay, we have the uh the rooftop scene, and then we have the very end. And that's it. And the very yeah, and end, then it just, just it just not... wraps up so quickly. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, oh, well, that kind of sucked. I, I get that they kind of wanted the characters to have like a happily ever after kind of ending, which I guess they kind of do. They do, yeah. Um, but I don't know. It just feels like it, it wraps up way too quick. <laughs> I think because they probably knew that like that was it for what they were getting to do. I think it ended uh, pretty quickly and easily. So I think it was fine, honestly. I mean, to be to be fair, the original manga for Gunsmith Cats is not a very long manga either. It's no, only it's eight like, volumes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Super um, short. Now, it does have sort of a, a sequel manga that came back in 2004 um, and ran for five volumes. So I guess if you want to include that in there too, but still, it's... I don't know. I I like the setup, at, like with the the like action romp, and I feel like it could be fun, um, especially in this era of like remakes and shit that we got going on. I'd like to see if there's a studio that could redo this, but make it especially make the ending better. I'm sure there's or just like many create a who new could. one. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Just make a new one. What that works too, or do an just adaptation, like, new, like an actual whole... adaptation of the manga. I don't think uh, it's good enough to even get an adaptation. I, I think they should. I, I don't I, think this I, is I, worth I, it. I would have to read the manga to see like how it compares to the movie. Because again, mm -hmm. this is my first time ever watching Gunsmith Cats. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, to me, I, I feel like this is a very solid, probably six out of ten for me. Mm. Just because, like, I. <laughs> Everything about it screams five out of ten, but I'm giving it one extra point for just looking good <laughs> and still for looking good after drawn. all these years. Well, it's just like it's not that great of a story. Like my life did not change after watching this OVA series. Um, it's pretty cool, but in terms of like '90s anime, there are way better options. Oh I yeah, would for rather sure. Recommend people sure. go watch like Cowboy Bebop Bob. or you know like Trigun or Ghost uh, in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell or Evangelion. Kind of Evangelion. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't know if I recommend Evangelion. That's a whole different. Show, but... <laughs> oh, oh, hot take. Hot take. I guess. <laughs> Speaking of things that end in a wet fart. Anyway. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> you're not. You're not wrong. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I, I just feel like it's not a, a life changing type of anime that I would not. say like you need to go watch it. It's something mm -hmm. that if you want to watch it, if you've got time, you want to see something stupid and it's action filled and dumb, you know, turn your brain off. You want to go watch a Michael Bay film? I got the perfect anime for you. <laughs> you want old 90s anime? I got one for you. A Michael Bay film with less lens flares. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, I mean, it doesn't lie to you. Gunsmith Cats is, it sells sex, it sells guns, action, cars, yeah. America. action, cars, guns, girls, America. It's all a man needs in life, really, truly. 
The only thing this was missing was someone just cracking open a beer and, like, watching TV. Then you would have had the perfect amalgamation of America. Oh, my God. The joke that they make in episode one about, like, all Rally likes to eat is pizza and Chinese takeout. <laughs> and they drink Diet Pepsi. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, damn, she's true. <laughs> she is true. True American, right there. <laughs> and I like when the when Rally is uh, trying to convince Becky to go with them, and she says, "I'll buy you dinner." And then she thinks about it for a second, and then she looks right at Rally and says, "No pizza or Chinese food." <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. It has those moments. Um, a lot similar to what uh, everything John said. Um. Very much a five out of ten anime. Uh, bump it up to a six because America, fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a fun watch. It's something you don't need to remember. Nothing you need to uh, recommend to people. It's just a fun, cute thing that's there. But it, it it's good in the past, and that's where it should stay. Okay, um, I kind of agree with both you guys, except I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. Uh, mostly because I just, I enjoy watching stuff like this from time to time. Just stuff you don't have to think about, stuff that doesn't have a deep story, and stuff you can just sit back and appreciate the action scenes. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know. It's a good, it, it's good popcorn anime, I guess. That's yeah, the best I, way to describe it. it. Well, it's like how, you know, I like watching John Wick because it's like, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Dude, they kill I, his actually, dog. He's, I, I kind of, I kind of think He's about Baba Yaga. Kinda, yeah, yeah, Baba Yaga. I kind of think about this the same way I think about High School of the Dead. It's like it's a popcorn anime. You don't. It, it's yeah, not deep. Yeah, yeah, very. It's, but but I it's mean, fun. <laughs> I think uh, you're giving a lot of discredit to High School of the Dead because it's very <laughs> cinema, uh, cinema, cinematographic compared to Gunsmith Cats. Cinematic, but good try. <laughs> so cinema, 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 cinema. <laughs> Yeah. Cinnamon, you sound like you fucking Glep over there. <laughs> Damn, I want some more horchata now. Uh, yeah, I, I will say uh, to wrap this up, um, the one thing that I, I kind of wish wasn't true is that you weren't didn't have to be creative in order to watch this right now. As of the time of us recording this, this is not licensed anywhere to watch on a streaming service. And all of the physical copies that you can buy are out of print. So the only way you can buy a physical copy is if someone is selling it on eBay or some shit. Thank God I found it at my local garage sale. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I have a anime uh, store locally and they 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 will find some rare stuff if you just ask them and it is cool as shit that's actually pretty legit like i yeah it is all i have is corpos i hate all the corpos around me that's it nope this <laughs> all is a mainstream straight, bullshit straight up mom and pop shop uh, but they do have connections to like the industry so like they can get anything <laughs> Um, thankfully there was a few years ago, back in 2019, I believe, um, there was a, an outfit that did a, um, uh, what is it, a Kickstarter campaign to do a new physical re-release. And it was a limited, like limited run. I think they only had like a thousand of them and they oh, sold wow. out like they, they, first of all, the Kickstarter was funded within 24 hours and they sold all of them within, I think 48. Wow. That's cool. Uh, so, I mean, there's still obviously a lot of people out there that are very passionate about Gunsmith Cats, and that's good to see. Um, and I kind of like it's a... just like it's a collector's thing because it's like, yeah. you know, if it's a rare yeah, yeah. out of print piece of media, then people are more likely to want it, not because they like it, but because it's rare. That's Perhaps. A, that's, it, that is a phenomenon that happens. Especially Perhaps. amongst us weebs. <laughs> we yeah, people like to have... People like SSR gachapools, right? Like FOMO, my dude. I, FOMO. Yeah. I want the rares. I want the SSR Miku now! <laughs> Alright, Alex. Uh. Yes, out. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, thank you, everyone, for stopping by uh, to watch us talk about Gunsmith Cats. Um, happy Independence Day to all the Americans watching uh, this week. Uh, you can check down below to all the links for uh, Anime Club After Dark and all the stuff we do. We also have a merch store down there where you can buy Anime Club After Dark merch. Um, <clears throat> what else? What else? That's it. Um, I, I've been your host, Alex, and until next time, say goodnight, everybody.
Good night. Bye. Good. Got to drive up to Happy PA. birthday, America. Happy birthday, America. As the founding fathers intended. <laughs> Loads my musket. <laughs> <laughs>